Well, hello everyone. We are having our first lesson. So as I said in class, our general setup is going to be, we're going to have like maybe a 10 minute video the night before to do part of the lesson. And then we are going to uh, start the lesson the next day in class, or we're gonna finish the lesson the next day in class. That will allow you to have time to work on some problems in class while, we, while you have the opportunity to ask me some questions. So we are going to start uh, with chapter one. And many of these topics are very easy. So we are going to do a couple lessons in the same day. You can do two, you have two options. You can either print the notes and then copy them on the notes, or you can just write the notes into your notebook. Uh, either way is perfectly fine, whatever um, you prefer. So in our video, it's going to pause in a second and it's going to give you problem one. Go ahead and write that in problem one. So problem one will be right here. You're just going to write that problem on, in here. You're going to solve it. You're going to show your work right here in that space. And then it'll give you some, uh, some choices of answers. You'll select it. And then you will be able to continue with this video. All right. So problem one. Oop, let me go backwards there. All right, so problem one, hopefully you understand this section is clearly talking about the order of operations. It seems like we always pretty much start with the order of operations. Order of operations, there's one correct answer in math. So we start with parentheses. Then we do exponents. Multiplication and division, and you've all seen this before, um, we go in order from left to right, so it's not multiplication, then division, and the same for addition and subtraction. It's not adding, then subtracting. It's either one in order. So if subtraction comes first, we do that before addition, et cetera. Now, I don't love PEMDAS because to me, parentheses is not a great um, word. It really should be any kind of grouping. We're going to have a lot of different types of grouping, not just parentheses. All right, so that's order of operations. So when we do this problem, our first step here, and we always want to work down, we want to sort of do like an up, upside down triangle here. Let me try to get rid of this. There we go. So I want to sort of have like an upside down triangle where my work is going down and getting shorter and shorter. My first step is to do the grouping. So I have eight divided by two times four. Now, this is probably a very common mistake here. That's why I gave those two choices that I did. Many people here are going to look at this and say, okay, that's parentheses. And they are parentheses, but it's not a grouping symbol. This is multiplication. So the multiplication here and division are in order from left to right. So the first one is division. So my first step here is the eight divided, or my next step here is the eight divided by two, which gives me four. Again, the parentheses there are just showing multiplication, which gives me 16. Get in the habit of circling your answers there. All right, go ahead and do number two. You can write that in. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. So for this problem, I'm going to, I have grouping within a grouping. I always start with uh, in the center, in the middle of the grouping, in the center of the problem. So it's three times the quantity. There's no difference between square brackets and curve parentheses. Uh, parentheses. So it's three times the quantity of five. Now we do want you to learn to do two things at once. It'll save you time. Our first step here is to do this grouping, which would give me four. So it's five times four minus the next step would be exponents. and this is not affected by the first step. So if the first number is needed, like if I go back to the previous problem here, let me see how I go back here. If I go back to the previous problem, I can't like, are you capable of doing everything in your head? Yes. The answer is absolutely. You guys are all capable of doing everything in your head here. But the first uh, step was to add the two and two and get four. The second step then I have to use, I, I can't do two steps at once here because I'm using that first step. I need to show that. So here I,
All right, so when I can show two steps in the same line and the, and the first does not affect the other, like for example, if I have eight, let's get rid of this here. I'm still learning this. Let's delete it or at least move it. Let's erase it. Here we go. Let's do that. All right. So for example, like if I have three plus four minus seven, again, we're all capable of doing this in our head, but I want two steps here because the first order of operations would say to add, and then I need that number to do the second steps. So that's when I have to show both steps here. I could do the six minus two to get four. The four is not needed to get the next step. So I want to encourage you there to learn to show two steps. Anyway, continuing, I would have three times the quantity of 20 minus 16. Three times four, I can write that now as just one uh, normal parentheses. Books don't like to have um, two curved parentheses in the same problem, which is why they have square brackets and curved. And my final answer is 12. Get in the habit of circling that. On this problem, when I have a big division bar, this is where there's no parentheses here, but this is clearly a grouping symbol. So I have to, so that's the P in order of operations, but again, it is grouping. So I do the entire numerator. So this is going to be, uh, multiplication would come first. So it's nine plus 15. And in the denominator, I can do a step there. So 18 divided by six would be 12 plus three. Keep working my way down. So I have, you can put it, you can go across on these large division uh, problems if you find that easier. If you want to do that, that, that's fine. This is the one time where I think you can work sideways. And I would get 18 divided by, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once here. Let's try that arithmetic again. You will learn that I never, ever, ever make mistakes. Just kidding. Um, so this would give me 24 divided by 15. So I can do one step on the top, one step on the bottom. So in the numerator, I'm going to have nine plus 15. In the denominator, I'll have 18 divided by six, which would give me three plus three. This is one time with these uh, big uh, division symbols where you can work sideways. Uh, if you prefer to work down, that's fine too. So I wind up getting uh, 24 divided by six, which would give me four. And again, get in the habit of circling your answer. All right, number four, I'm going to substitute in the values that are given for each variable. Just be careful that you're substituting in the correct one. So this would be two. Now I always show multiplication with parentheses. Don't use the, uh, the time sign that you learned in second grade or third grade because it's gonna look like an X. Uh, I think parentheses are better than a dot plus three times a quantity. And then X is five minus one, all divided by five plus three plus two times one. I'll work down here. So this is going to give me then two times three is six. I can do a step over here, three times four. I can do a step down here, five plus three plus three. So I did three steps there at once, and that's great. We want you to learn to do that. That's going to give me six plus 12 divided by five plus three is eight plus three. Gives me, uh, let me go down here, 18 divided by, uh, what did I do wrong here? divided by five plus three 
plus two. And you see I did three steps there at once, which is great. We, we do want you to learn to do that. So we'd get six plus 12 divided by uh, eight plus two. Continue down here. And I get 18 divided by 10. Mixed numbers are fine, but in higher level math, we do want to use improper fractions. It's just easier to work with. So reduce both uh, divide evenly by two. So we get nine fifths, which is my final answer. All right, and we will stop with that for tonight.